Oshkosh, gosh. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Day. She refilled my whole well, so we can do this all week. Are you a future pilot? Oh, actually, I am already one. All right. <laughs> into the war, really didn't see any combat service, a combat built airplane, but then being surplus at the end of the war, was put into storage, flew with the Air Force until 1960, was sold surplus, turned into a fire bomber. See the big belly tank that was built into it? Used to fight forest fires down and out of Arizona. Then it was sold to Bill and Bob Howe down in Florida, who modified it. They put spray bars under the wing in the hard points where you put external stores. They put a Volkswagen motor in the back of it running a pump, and they sprayed orange groves and mosquitoes. <laughs> now, DDT was what they were spraying mosquitoes with back then. Well, DDT is very corrosive. Yeah. So after a decade of doing that, the airplane was so full of corrosion, it was no longer airworthy. They donated to the SST Museum. They called it Big Bertha at the time. So here it is sitting at, at the SST Museum in 1981. What did you see? The stretcher flat, the tires are flat, sitting down in the sand, bird crap all over it. <laughs> it had been outside for like 15 years in the Florida weather and continued to simply rot. Tom Riley, when the museum went defunct, and then Tom uh, bought, the, uh, bought the airplane at auction, took the wings off, towed it to his restoration, his temporary lot, and then to his shop for restoration. And then begins here is the restoration. So this is what the airplane looked like on the inside. Oh my okay. gosh. Okay. This is the flight deck. Oh my okay. gosh. Pilot seat, co-pilot seat. That's where the instrument panel was. Other thing up in the nose, uh, miles, hundreds of miles of cables all had to be replaced, pulleys. Look how corroded the bottom of the yeah. fuselage was. Okay, you can see they already started removing a lot of the skins. When they took the tank out, the belly of it, they had to completely rebuild the center section. That's the tank that they took out wow. the middle of it. That was the, the, uh, the spray tank. And then you can see how much skin, they were starting to take skin off to replace it. Tops, under it, everywhere, they were removing skin because of the corrosion. Horizontal stabilizer was completely corroded and had to be totally rebuilt. Mm -hmm. wow. So the only part of the original uh, stabilizer that remained was the leading edge. Tom rebuilt the rest of the stabilizer. Now, we instructed the Naval Test Pilot School for the last 20 years. I have this slide built into the program right toward the end. <laughs> I said, gentlemen, this is the airplane you're going to be flying. <laughs> so I get a little bit of a giggle around the, around the group because the first day we have to do a, a, a big mass brief at everybody that's going to fly with us. <laughs> then you know, they start doing a restoration, work, rebuilding in the sails here, outdoors in the weather. Uh, before Tom got his big hanger, the new horizontal stabilizer after it's been rebuilt. The original instrument panel, as Tom had restored it, there were still a few instruments he hadn't put in it. This is the instrument panel today. Beauty. Okay. Now, uh, Max Hodges and I designed this panel around the Garmin 750XI in the center. Garmin G5s is a primary flight instruments. And then many of the original flight instruments, so you still retain some of the authenticity. So today it's you know, much more modern. One of my favorite pictures with Dick Cole, who was Doolittle's co-pilot. This was, we were flying, Dick was seven, 96 years old and we were flying to Punta Gorda, Florida International Air Show. We had a group from the Chinese embassy that was gonna meet us there. We're doing this public relations thing between the Chinese and Greater Coast. You know, 
the Ch simple Chinese peasants saved 56 of the raiders at a cost of a quarter of a million civilians who were massacred by the Japanese because they were helping the raiders. 56 American young boys, quarter of a million Chinese. This is Jimmy Doolittle's wristwatch. This is a watch he was given to him by his mother-in-law in 1939, and he wore it all throughout the war. It was invented by Charles Lindbergh. It was put in production by the Long Jeans Company, who was the finest watchmaker in the world in the 30s. It normally lives in a safe deposit box because it has been appraised for more than the airplanes were. <laughs> wow. So it lives in a safe deposit box, but I bring it here to share it with, you know, the other Warbird drivers. Awesome. awesome. Here at Oshkosh, I'm about to do something I can't believe I get to do. Good friend, I ran into him out of the seaplane base watching the float planes take off and land. He invited me to go for a ride in this aircraft, a B-25. So uh, my wife and I are both going up with a couple other friends and uh, we just met the pilot and went through the story about the complete remanufacture of this. It is mind-blowing what it took to get this thing going and uh, it's just a historic piece of history everything that the b-25 fleet did for us over the years is just remarkable the guy flying it is wearing jimmy doolittle's watch and the watch he's wearing is likely worth more than this plane we're going in the history behind it's unreal i can't believe i'm this lucky aviation family is great just to to get invited by friends in the community um it's a lifetime experience so here we go i'm not gonna work right now let's go play <laughs> this is my brother mark's line